Are you worried about your risk for Alzheimer's disease? Maybe you have a family member or a loved one that is at risk or actually has symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. In this video, we're going to look at elevated homocysteine levels and Alzheimer's risk, what the link is there, what some of the research says about it, and my take on what that research says. So again, my name is Dr. Taranella, and if you're new to this channel, just want you to know that I'm making these videos to help you go beyond the basics of your health, whether it's a confusing lab test, nutrition, symptom, or diagnosis. I make these videos to help you get a better understanding of what's going on in your body. So if you like this kind of information on those topics, click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaimer, the information in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as a treatment for any health condition or as a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical profession. It should be used as an educational guide to deeper your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's look at elevated homocysteine and Alzheimer's disease risk. <laughs> So in this video, we're gonna look at elevated homocysteine and Alzheimer's disease risk. So there definitely is some evidence to suggest a link between elevated homocysteine levels and Alzheimer's risk. So what we're gonna do in this video is look at the research on this elevated risk in homocysteine and also the role of homocysteine in cognitive decline in general. So if you don't know, homocysteine is an amino acid that's produced as a byproduct of methionine metabolism. It's going to go up when there is a deficiency of certain B vitamins like B12, folate, and B6. And as mentioned in previous videos, elevated levels of homocysteine is definitely associated, whether causative or just casually associated with cardiovascular, neurodegenerative, and many other health conditions. There are definitely a lot of studies that show high levels of homocysteine increase the risk of cognitive decline and Alzheimer's disease. One theory as to why that may be taking place is that homocysteine can lead to inflammation and damage of the blood vessels in the brain, which can then result in decreased blood flow, inflammation, and all these contribute to developing Alzheimer's disease over a long period of time. I think there's probably something more intrinsic going on with the vitamin levels themselves, and we're going to compare and contrast these different viewpoints in this video. So as you might guess, the relationship between homocysteine and Alzheimer's disease is not fully understood and more research is needed to fully confirm whether or not elevated homocysteine is going to lead to Alzheimer's disease. It could simply just be a marker for increased risk, even though it's not causing that increased risk. Again, there's many studies investigating the relationship here. And so we're going to go ahead and look at some of those studies here are a few examples. So there's a meta-analysis published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease in 2014. And this was a review article that looked at 19 different studies looking at the association between homocysteine and cognitive decline. The analysis did find that homocysteine levels were associated with higher risk or higher likelihood of cognitive decline, cognitive impairment, and dementia. Another study published in the Journal of American Medical Association in 2002 followed a group of 816 elderly participants for eight years and found that high homocysteine levels increase the risk of Alzheimer's disease. Systematic review and meta-analysis published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease in 2019 looked at 26 different studies and found higher homocysteine levels were also associated with higher risk of Alzheimer's disease. So there's lots of studies and research pointing in this direction of increased risk of Alzheimer's disease and cognitive decline with higher homocysteine levels. However, it's likely not the homocysteine itself that's causing the problem, but what it's telling us about the underlying physiology. Remember, homocysteine levels go up when B12 and folate levels go down and B6 sometimes too goes down. Both of these vitamins are important for making neurotransmitters and other really important physiological processes in the body. Of course, the neurotransmitters are definitely going to be needed for cognitive health and maintaining the health of the brain and the nervous system in general. B12, for instance, is important for 
producing the myelin sheath that allows for the nerves to properly send signals back to the brain. And so I think it's really hard to tease out whether or not the homocysteine or the B vitamins are actually to blame for the cognitive decline and increased risk for Alzheimer's disease. I should also note that poor nutrition and low vitamin levels are a problem in elderly patients, especially vitamin B12 as absorption levels go down as one ages. So there's another study published in the journal JAMA of Internal Medicine and found people who took a homocysteine lowering supplement for five years were no more likely to prevent cognitive decline than those who did not take the supplement. Of course, this is helpful information to know, but if the study isn't large enough, it's going to miss the people that are actually getting benefit out of this. Not everyone is going to have high homocysteine and have deficiency of these B vitamins in large enough amounts to where it's actually going to matter. The study's author concluded that there's no evidence that lowering homocysteine levels can prevent or treat cognitive decline. But again, it's likely that only those with high homocysteine levels will actually get that benefit. If if your homocysteine levels are above 10 or 12, there's really not going to be any benefit to lowering homocysteine levels. And so if we give homocysteine lowering supplements to everyone, it's really not going to make a big difference for those without elevated homocysteine levels. And we also have to remember that like any health condition, Alzheimer's disease and dementia are not all one thing. We categorize them as the same, but there's many different types of presentations for Alzheimer's and cognitive decline. And some of them are going to benefit more than likely from things that lower or optimize homocysteine levels. Now, that's how I look at and interpret the research, and it's how I understand the physiology of our bodies. So take that with that understanding. And it's important that you check with your doctor and make sure you're having your homocysteine levels checked and not just assume that it's high and take a whole bunch of supplements to lower it. Too low of homocysteine can also be a problem. All right, how'd I do? Did that help you better understand the link between elevated homocysteine and Alzheimer's risk. Hopefully it did. If it didn't, or you have other questions, drop those in the comment section. Happy to answer your questions. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.